All right. We are going to do something that has never been done before. Um, today is Friday, July 14th. It's 1.30. Yesterday, a tweet went out saying that Pat and I would be on the podcast together. Yes, I am here in a beautiful Myers Park in Pat's new condo. Last night, we were at Selwyn's, had some transfusions, excellent vibes, fantastic. Um, we promised the podcast last night. Podcast was not recorded. Got a little busy, had a little fun, but there's so much to talk about that I'm going to hop on and go ahead and do it. Uh, this morning, we headed over to Laurel Market for some Taylor ham on ciabatta bread, which was just absolutely fantastic. But yes, it's just going to be me. We're going to chat and we're going to have some fun. So let's kick it off with some hokey haikus. We had three submissions today, which we love to see. And the first one actually kind of explains the situation that we're in right now which uh, is from Patrick. He did submit and he said, HVAC and electric appliances. That's what Pat is doing. He's handling some business, got the HOA, got some stuff going on. We talked about the flooded house, taking care of business. Moving on, we got Diablo fan account. The 704 for whom Pat Finn calls his home, shut up and dance with me. Little little triggering. Pat Finn, not the biggest fan of Shut Up and Dance with Me. Neither am I. I think it's a little bit overplayed. And then the last one, which kind of encapsulates how we're all feeling right now, comes from Facts from Max. I'm feeling awesome. Three of the top 10 in state. Snowball is rolling. Let's go ahead and talk about that right now. And thank you to everybody who submitted letters from the lunch pail. We got a four-star commitment from Keelan Adams yesterday he's a green run wide receiver he's the 30th ranked wide receiver in the country he is the fifth ranked recruit in the state of virginia top 300 prospect 189th to be specific in the class of 2024 we were competing against pittsburgh alabama ohio state and south carolina yes shane beamer who's come to blacksburg come to the virginia area and it's taken some guys from the state of Virginia, kind of like Penn State has. And Coach Price said, no more. Keelan Adams is now the top-ranked recruit in the class, which ranks 36th in the nation of composite. But stop looking at that number. The most important number is the average recruit ranking, which sits at 88.12. And the Hokies are 27th in the country. According to that ranking, we are sandwiched between Ole Miss and Michigan State trailing only Florida State, Miami, and Clemson in the ACC. Shout out to OxVT for providing that in a neat graphic. Easy to read. Appreciate it. Look, it feels like this was one of the first times that we tuned in to a live commitment stream from 24-7, which has happened a bunch of times. The ones that come to mind just off the top of my head were Ramon Brown last year. Coach Burden swooped in. Stole him. We thought he was going to be a Hokie. And then you had Josh Sweat, who went to FSU. Uh, but we tuned into this live stream. We kind of felt like he was coming to Virginia Tech. South Carolina had kind of, if you talked to the right people, they believed that he was coming to Virginia Tech. And lo and behold, there was no disappointment. There was no upsetliness. Uh, he ended up committing to Virginia Tech. And it's huge. It's it's absolutely huge. I want to go ahead and share a tweet from Matei Sis that came out, um, just kind of summarizing how seismic that this is. This is already a very imp impressive recruiting class that Coach Pies put together. But in terms of what this means, Virginia Tech now has three top 10 Virginia recruits for the first time since 2017. We have four four-star recruits committed for the first time since 2019. All five in-state commits our top 25 Virginia recruits, and again, an 88.12 average, which is the top in the 24-7 sports era for Virginia Tech. This is special. This is truly, truly special. Really, really excited about it. Dynamic, dynamic playmaker from Keelan Adams. And this wasn't only a complete and awesome job by the coaching staff, but the players. I think of David Belfort. I think of Gabe. I think of everybody who has just been working so hard to create this family atmosphere, this home atmosphere that everybody talks about, and you're seeing the rewards of it now. So 
you know, congratulations to Keelan Adams. We're really excited to have him in the boat again, green run high school and a four-star recruit from the state of Virginia. So fantastic. In terms of recruiting, let's take a look forward here. Chris Cole is a huge target for Virginia tech. He's the number one player in the state. He's a linebacker out of Salem. He's an absolute stud. He's a 63rd ranked player in America. We're right now duking it out with Georgia, Miami, and Penn State. Um, so that's something to keep your eyes on. And that would be an unbelievable rabbit for Coach Pride to pull out of the hat. Some other questions. I am curious what the situation is with Makai White. He's the seventh ranked player in the state from King George. He's got crystal balls in for, I believe, Michigan and Maryland. From a numbers perspective, we have a couple of wide receivers in the boat already. 15 recruits in this class in total. I'm curious to see how the rest of this recruitment materializes for Makai White. Um, look, at the end of the day, there are a certain amount of spots. You offer more players. Then you have spots four, hoping to snag a couple, maybe three, maybe four, depending on what the roster looks like. And the wide receiver room is a little crowded. Got some good recruits here. So I'm interested to see how this pans out. And that kind of ties into my hope um, for this class. I would love to see some size. Offensive line, defensive line. We've talked about it. It is a huge need right now. Right now and uh, moving forward. So some more big dudes in the pipeline. Um, that's something that I would absolutely love to see. But again, I cannot stress enough how incredible the progress that Coach Pry and the staff have made uh, with this class and specifically in the state of Virginia. Um, just an unbelievable job. And it does feel like a, um, a seminal moment. Um, no pun intended, uh, but a huge, huge moment for this class and the future of this program. Speaking of, I usually don't do this because um, it's not in our best interest. But <laughs> if you have not listened to the podcast that released yesterday yet with Coach Pry, please do so. We have retweeted it on our Twitter. It is going to be located in the article that comes out with this podcast as well. Coach Pry sat down with Adam Brenneman. If you are unfamiliar with Adam Brenneman, he hosts the Next Up podcast, uh, Next Up with Adam. And he sat down with Coach Pry. He has familiarity with Coach Pry. He played tight end, I believe, at Penn State at the same time Coach Pry was at Penn State as well. He came over to the facility, great video, sat down with him for about an hour, um, and it's awesome. Before I dive into just some of the biggest takeaways, and quotes from it. I just want to say like that coach Pry is unbelievable at this kind of stuff at summarizing his vision at communicating with the fan base, with the letterman, with uh, recruits, everybody else. He has a magnetic personality and this really comes across anytime he talks to the media, whether it be at a press conference, whether it be at an interview, whether we interview him, he uh, he's magnetic. And that really, really came across. And this is very, very well done. Let's talk about some of the points. First and foremost, he talked about coming to Virginia Tech and the decision to come to Virginia Tech. And he talked about how much it meant to him and how much Coach Beamer meant to him and how much the place means to him and how much he wants this to get back. But he said that he really had to be sold on making sure that there was alignment from the top down. So from Witt to John Boleyn to getting what he needs to get to get this program to where he believes it needs to be. And it's encouraging to hear. Alignment is so important, whether it's with your family, whether it's with business, and especially in athletics. And that box seems to be checked for all of the flack that Witt has gotten over the last couple of years, and we're sticking specifically to football. Let's talk about a little bit of what's gone on since he's come aboard. The Hokie staff has expanded. Um, I took this from the Richmond Dispatch. Uh, Virginia Tech in the fiscal year of 2021 and 2022 boosted support staff investment by nearly 80% from $1.9 to $3.4 plus assistant football coach 
compensation increased by 33%, 4.2 million to 5.6 million. Um, there are the numbers for you. Tech's NIL situation has gotten national recognition. Uh, Triumph and Hokey Way, they've been doing fantastic, fantastic work. Um, please check them out. We are doing podcasts with the Hokey Way. Uh, we're expecting to do two a month. We have one coming up this next week. Um, and then Triumph, they have their digital platform you can check out. They do awesome work with the players as well. The new players lounge, our recruiting budget. It just seems like everything that we or Coach Pry is asking for has been delivered to put us in the position to be successful. So my overall message to that, why don't we cool the Jets on the fire wit chance on the this school doesn't want to be successful chance on the, you know, we're never going to get back because nobody cares to get back. Um, Coach Pry is saying that's not true. There are some data points for you to look at for it not to be true. And um, the momentum is great. So just keep that in mind. If you don't keep that in mind, you may end up Twitterless. That was kind of the talk and tweets thing that we have. Joe Rogers has been uh, exited from Twitter. I'm sure we'll see him back. Uh, but in the meantime, Threads is an alternative provided by Mark Zuckerberg. Um, so that could be a, a temporary stopgap for you. Coach Pry also talked about the importance of keeping kids in states. These were the points that he said. No one will know more about the kids in Virginia than us, whether it's getting familiar with them in eighth grade, whether it's freshman year, sophomore year, getting to know their coaches, everything else. They have made it a point to travel and get in everywhere that they can in the state of Virginia. Um, he also said that Virginia kids were visiting Penn State four to five times and had never been to Blacksburg when he was at Penn State. That's a problem. That's a problem, especially when you think of how far away Penn State is from some parts of Virginia. Now, if you look at the beach, you look at Northern Virginia, it's a little bit closer. It's not the same, but it's almost equidistant to Blacksburg. But those kids need to be visiting Virginia Tech. They need to be making that trip. He also said that Virginia Tech is the flagship school of Virginia. Virginia Tech was Clemson before Clemson was Clemson. Competed for a national championship, conference championships, 10 win seasons. Everybody was talking about Virginia Tech. And then lastly, moms, dads, uncles, aunts, coaches, they all know how special this place can be and how special this place was. Um, so I love to hear that. I love to hear that. And again, it's not just talking about it. He's done a great job in the state of Virginia, specifically in this cycle. He also hinted and spoke on having the right people in the program, both players and coaches. He started with the coaches. And when Coach Rudolph departed, a lot of folks were kind of freaking out. Obviously, Coach Rudolph has a great pedigree. He was only here for one season, and then we replaced him with somebody who not a lot of people knew. It was Ron Crook. And he mentioned in the interview that as he was looking to fill this role, he interviewed two sitting SEC coaches, two sitting Big Ten coaches, and one sitting ACC coaches. But he decided to take Coach Crook because he felt that he was the right fit for us. It is so important for Coach Pry not to have people picking Virginia Tech as a stepping stone or picking Virginia Tech for a reason other than I want to be here to be successful on the field or I want to be here to be successful with my family and developing young men uh, into playing. So that's huge. And then with the player side of things, getting the right kind of guys to be at Tech and taking them. He mentioned in this new age of NIL and everything else and, you know, recruiting behind the backs of coaches of players that aren't even in the transfer portal. He ended every meeting before the players went home this summer or this fall with, do you love it here? And that's so, so, so important to understand and know that your players aren't just showing up and punching a clock. Do you love Virginia Tech? Do you want Virginia Tech to get to where we all ultimately want it to be? Uh, I love that he that he shared that. And I love that those are the conversations that he's having. And ultimately Virginia tech will be successful, not only by getting people who are talented in the door, but getting people that want to be here and want to see it through. That's going to be huge. NIL. One of the better discussions around NIL it was not long, but it was one of the better discussions that I've heard because it seems like every college coach is talking about it. It's a hot topic. They're asked in every interview. And it typically turns into finger pointing, being upset. I've defended Pat Narduzzi in the past, but he gets into it. He gets all angry because he lost his best wide receiver to USC. 
And it was very simple when Coach Pride talked about it. He said, I don't want anyone to come to Virginia Tech just for NIL, which aligns with his previous point. But I do want to be competitive in this space, which I think Virginia Tech has done. Um, he also said that he is all for players wanting to profit off of name, image, and likeness. I think we all are. But it should not be – NIL should not be a recruiting inducer. It should not be, hey, you should come to Alabama – or you should come, I'm not want to name a school. You should come to such and such school because we're able to pay you X amount. We can, we can just outbid you than everybody else. No, that's not what this was supposed to be. That's not what the NCAA intended it to be. Um, granted, the NCAA was just like, hands off. We're just going to let it all happen. But um, I agree. I could not agree more. Um, and that's what he's looking at. Be competitive in the space. Put student athletes in a position to profit off of the name, image, and likeness and brand that they ultimately build because that's what everybody else is in the world is able to do. So uh, really, really appreciated that. The last thing I'll hit on is what still needs to happen for us to get to where we want to go. He basically laid out the, the idea of what he wants to see from this team moving forward. And point number one was – on the field, great defense, run the football, have a dynamic quarterback. Certainly lines up with the previous success of Virginia Tech in the past. Number two, recruit the state of Virginia. We've talked about it ad nauseum. He is doing that in this cycle. He is making that a focus for this year and years beyond. And he's leaving some breadcrumbs for some of those players who are younger that we're going to want to have years later on. So I'm excited to see how that pays off. And then the last point, have a great staff and staff retention. And the staff retention piece boils back down to the relationships that they have, not only with Virginia Tech, but this area of the country. Do they want to be here? Are they excited to go into work every single day when they park their car in front of the Merriman facility? Are they jazzed to go in or are they thinking about something else? That's what I absolutely love about this staff. They work extremely hard, extremely long hours. They seem to love Virginia Tech. And, um, you know, that's kind of the roadmap for success. Great defense, run the football, have a dynamic quarterback, recruit the state of Virginia, have a great staff, and retain this staff. Pretty fantastic blueprint. So, look, in summary, go listen to this podcast. Coach Pry is incredible, incredible at this stuff. Loves Virginia Tech, has a clear vision of where he wants to be. He is an amazing communicator. He is genuine. He's honest about his intentions. The situation at hand, he takes ownership for things when they're not the way that they're supposed to look and tells you how he's going to try to address them. Um, he's incredibly easy to root for. And it was, it was great content. Don't miss it. Go check it out. So we will go ahead and we will link that. I thought about not doing this. This is kind of the last piece of this uh, of this Bill Solo pod, um, but it was a big part of the news. It was something that was talked about. It's tweeted at us ad nauseum, and and Brian Holbrook submitted it as a letter from the lunch pail, and he basically wanted to get uh, our thoughts from Bruce Smith's comments in the Virginia Golfer magazine. I did not see the magazine until it was texted to me um, by Trent Young. Shout out, and then I got it from. It seemed like 20 or 30 other people. And I'm just going to go through a couple of the quotes and give my thoughts on it. And the first quote, and I think the quote that we can all agree on here is Bruce said, this is Bruce Smith in the Virginia Golfer Magazine. He said, first of all, Coach Fuente was not a good fit for Virginia Tech. I agree. We had some great times early on. We had a spark in 2019, which I think barring COVID could have rolled into 20 and 2020, but it didn't. And it fell apart from there. Coach Fuente was never truly embraced by the fan base, by the state of Virginia. And ultimately, that is a result of decisions made by that regime, the way that that regime carried itself, the way that it opened itself up to media. Um, and on the flip side, Coach Pry has done a great job rebuilding those relationships, mobilizing the fan base, the Letterman, the alumni, and beyond. So, um, no, it was not a good fit, and he is no longer here. The other quote that didn't make a ton of sense to me was this, and it was that we should have relieved him of his duties three years prior to when we did. This is just flat out something that nobody would have done at that time based upon the results on the field and in recruiting. 
Coach Fuente was hired in 2021. So let's spin it back to 2018. You're saying that, and again, hindsight is 2020, but you're saying that we should have fired Coach Fuente after going 10 and 4 and playing the ACC title game, going 9 and 4 and losing to Oklahoma State to get that 10th win at the end of the game, and then going 6 and 7 after Josh Jackson gets hurt at Old Dominion, the roster is diminished. Um, all of that happens on the field. And then you have the 24th ranked class in the country signing after the 2018 season where he went six and seven. And the 2017 class was 26th ranked with three top players out of the top 10 from Virginia and five top 10 players from North Carolina and Maryland. From a revolt results standpoint, nobody's doing that. Nobody is firing anybody after that three year sample size. Um, so other than that, other than that point specifically, I agree with his other sentiments. He went on to say, quote, I told Brent that out of all the years that we had the other coach, we may have had two or three conversations. Again, that ties back to engaging with the fan base, engaging with former players. Um, you're talking about the first player that came out of the school who was picked in the NFL draft. Number one, you had a recruiting tool that lives in the state of Virginia that you're not using. Coach Pry recognized, recognized that. He's made the necessary changes to engage not only myself, but Michael Vick and other players who have gone on to make a name for themselves at the next level. There's a tremendous amount of value in having us speak about the vision of Virginia Tech football and how we are going to get back. Completely agree. Look, Coach Fuente could have done a lot of things better. It turns out he wasn't the right fit. He is now gone. And again, Coach Pry has made wholesale changes, especially in the engagement, recruiting focus, and a plethora of other categories. I think we're headed in the right direction. There is a ton to be excited about. To put a bow on this, I feel like everybody loves hearing me talk about it. This is the last time I'm going to address it. I, along with a lot of my teammates from that time, love that guy and love that staff. He was great to me. He was great to my family. He did not originally recruit me. He did not originally recruit a lot of my teammates. A big reason that I have the opportunity to be on this podcast today, talk about Virginia Tech, build this community, um, is due to his support and his guidance. I wish him all the best in whatever is next for him. Uh, I just hope that one day we can move on from the school of thought that this staff was littered with bad people who um, you know, were stupid and didn't work hard and didn't care about Virginia Tech. That's, to quote him, ludicrous crap. And can we focus on the good that is coming from the program today? That's, that's all I'm looking for. So um, closing out, I want to shout out Alexis Pilata helping out at Alumni Hall, senior transfer from Massachusetts and a listener. So thank you so much for the support. Be sure to check out Alumni Hall for Peter Millar quarter zips. They did have the one that Coach Pry had on in that interview. So if you're interested in it, get on down there and check it out. And when you check out, go ahead and mention Sons of Saturday. They're going to give you 10% off. So I went ahead and I stocked up. I got myself a nice Johnny O polo. It's laying around here somewhere. Going to wear that today. Going to Luke Combs tomorrow night, which should be a ton of fun. Um, some other updates here. Huge week of podcasts. If you missed them, we had coach Galt on this week. He's the director of strength and conditioning for uh, Virginia tech football. He was fantastic. We had Marcellus Barnes jr. The four-star commit from Tennessee on, he was great. Introduced him to the fan base. And then Ed sat down with the Northwestern transfer, Robbie Beeren on a hokey hoops off season podcast. There's some great stuff from Alex Arnett on the site. Every time Virginia Tech gets a recruit that commits, puts out an article, check it out on sonsofsaturday.com. Our merchandise has moved over. Our official and only place that you can get merchandise is now the Southwest Virginia shop. So go over to the swvashop.com. We love supporting local business. We love doing everything that we can to uh, uplift Virginia Tech-based communities and businesses this goes in line with that so check them out and don't just check out our gear check out their awesome stuff um awesome awesome stuff that comes out they just released a coach pride t-shirt yesterday um so be sure not to miss that last thing that i have the rutgers game ticket interest form is coming to an end we have over 150 people that are registered what we did is we bulk bought uh, we are bulk buying Rutgers tickets for the Rutgers Virginia Tech game at SHI Stadium. It's going to be huge. Pat and I from New Jersey, really, really excited about that. 
we are going to get a bunch of seats, sit together. The seats will be discounted. You will get a T-shirt as well that will only be available if you attend this game. Um, we're going to have tailgates. We're going to have special events. We're going to have a, a hockey club event that Thursday night. There's more details to come out on that. But if you are interested in attending this game and you would like to get tickets, DM us. This is probably going to be closed mid next week. It's July 14th. So you have a couple of days here to get that in. Um, but it's going to be great. Rutgers versus Virginia Tech, September 16th in Piscataway, New Jersey. We're looking forward to it. Other than that, let me know how this went. It was just me talking for 25 minutes and 39 seconds. Um, appreciate you hanging out with us. Appreciate you tuning in. If you get a chance, hit the like button on YouTube. Leave us a review on Apple or uh, Spotify. It'd be a huge, huge help. Um, but shout out to you guys. I hope you guys are having a great summer. And we will talk to you again soon. And as always, go Hokies.